Enter is Christoph from NMicro speaking about design verification very later, UVM. Thank you. All right. Uh, hi, my name is Krzysztof Biegański. I'm uh, an engineering manager at NMicro. I lead uh, one of the software teams there. And this team focuses on uh, the digi digital design tooling, so including very later. And today I want to talk to, about to you about some recent advancements in uh, design verification using Verlator. So uh, we've been contributing to Verlator for quite a while now uh, with the goal of supporting UVM fully. Um, and we've been working on enabling more and more complex test benches over the years. Um, like a current target that we have is supporting the UVM cookbook examples. So UVM cookbook is this like popular guide for UVM, I guess. Um, and yeah, there's like uh, there's some, some examples uh, in that book, uh, 33 examples to be specific. We have 21 of these actually passing. Uh, and actually the, the ones that aren't passing, they already compile um, except for one. <laughs> but uh, they have some runtime issues. We had to remove the usage of one non-standard extension uh, and it's kind of related to one specific simula simulator. Um, but it's like a GUI related extension, like Everlator doesn't have GUI anyway, so. Um, and yeah, you can track progress uh, on this, uh, on GitHub. Uh, the first link is like more specific to Verlator. The second link is uh, SVTest, I'm sure any of you are familiar with this, uh, test suite. Um, yeah, and Ver uh, UVM has uh, really been tricky to elaborate in Verlator, uh, it really stretches the very later muscles uh, in the front end. Um, and previously you had to have a bunch of workarounds in the UVM source code to, to be able to elaborate it using very later. Uh, but now uh, you can actually elaborate all of UVM, uh, like as of this week, you can elaborate all of UVM 2017 without any workarounds. So you can just get it straight from Accelera and, and elaborate it. Thanks. And uh, yeah, this is an eff the effort of not only our team at, at Micro, but also Wilson, uh, the elite kind of maintainer of Ver uh, Verlator. Uh, so it's, it's a group effort. Um, yeah, so that's not the whole story, right? Because you don't need just need UVM to run UVM test benches. You need uh, a bunch of features around it. So uh, we've been adding some more features uh, that are we saw used in, in test benches. Uh, one example is nested classes. Seems like a kind of easy feature, but it is kind of tricky to add it to like a uh, old code base, uh, a feature like that. Um, but yeah, nested classes are available now. Um, you can now uh, disable fork processes by, lab by label. Like we added uh, disable fork um, like two years ago or something, but it was only, uh, you could only disable all the forks in the current scope. Now you can actually specify which uh, process you want to stop. Uh, we recently added generic interfaces, so kind of like, um, this is kind of like back type interfaces or maybe like C++ templates. So instead of specifying, when you define the module, uh, instead of specifying like a specific interface interface type, you can use this interface keyword and it's just uh, the usage of the interface in your module defines what the interface should be. So as long as the interface kind of fits it, and you can use it. Um, last year, the biggest topic for us was constrained randomization. Um, yeah, and this is uh, probably the coolest feature that we, we've added. Uh, it was the first version of that, I think, landed last summer. Uh, but we've been contributing to, to this part uh, since. And this, uh, the idea behind this, uh, the uh, idea we had behind this is uh, to use SMT solvers. So this is kind of like SAT, uh, so they're kind of like SAT solvers, but, but, but more, ge <laughs> more general because you don't uh, only have Boolean formulas. Uh, you also have uh, like real numbers and integers and even some like data structures. So it's a more general uh, kind of uh, version of, of the SAT problem. And uh, the problem is that these solvers are not random. Uh, they don't do random solutions. At least they don't have to uh, do random. 
So we had to force them to be random, and for that we uh, we borrowed this idea from the Crave library for System C, and the, this was uh, the idea is to just add a hidden constraint that's kind of like hashing random bits of the uh, variables that you want to randomize to some random value. So this kind of when you change that constraint, uh, you force the solver to be more creative and come up with different solutions. And yeah, in theory, solvers that speak this SMTlib2 language are supported, but uh, Verlater is tested with Z3, so I recommend using that. You can override that, because it's not linked to Verlater. Uh, you can override the solver, but yeah, I recommend using Z3. Um, yeah, and this is how it looks kind of under the hood. Um, on, the li on the left, we have a constraint problem in, in Verilog, a system Verilog, I guess. Uh, and on the right, we have the equivalent in SMTlib2. And yeah, we just, you know, de we declare the variable uh, x. For some reason, it's, it's declare fun. I don't know why. Uh, don't ask me. So uh, then you have the asserts, which are the constraints. Uh, like, it's, the, uh, <laughs> it's a bit tricky to read, but if you look, into, look uh, closely, it, it is kind of the equivalent of the le left side. And the third assert is the hash thing that I mentioned. In, in this case, it's just like a two bit variable, so it's very basic and, and simple. Uh, yeah, and yeah, this constraint randomization support is actually quite extensive, I would say. Um, we have uh, things like uh, constraints that you can specify at the call site, like inline constraints, so using the with keyword like, like this. Um, you can actually uh, do uh, pre-randomized and post-randomized hooks, so you just override these pre-randomized, post-randomized methods to have them called before you, like when you call randomize, these get called before and after. Um, you can actually use a run mode for disabling uh, variable randomization. You can uh, use constraint mode to disable constraints. Uh, so it's quite flexible, it's like, there's a bunch of features there. Um, we've also been contributing to the coverage part of Relator. Um, we added support for toggle coverage in generate, uh, gen blocks that just wasn't there before. Um, we included ternary, op ternary operator in branch coverage because it is like a statement basically. And we added separate toggle coverage counters for changes like basically postage and negative changes. Uh, this is to bring it more in line with other simulators. Um, and the last thing I want to mention uh, is uh, we did some work on post synthesis simulation. Um, so there was like a, a community originated pull request that uh, tried to add this uh, s th these things. So you use defined primitives if you, if you don't know them. They're like a way to specify basically like a lookup table in System Verilog. And yeah, they found that they're often used for sim uh, PDK simulation models. So yeah, we we wanted them supported. But yeah, there was this pull request uh, that someone else started, but we had to get it across the finish line. Um, and we also implemented SAF support. And SAF is this file format that stores um, signal activities in like an aggregated form. Like so, so I think it's something like duty cycle, something like that. But basically, it, instead of having the whole waveform uh, dumped from a simulation, you just have this small SAF file that's kind of constant for your design, right? Because uh, VCD can grow in, in, uh, indefinitely and it can grow to gigabytes easily. But this SAIF file is just kilobytes, maybe megabytes. Uh, so it's very fast to process using tools like OpenSTA, for example. And under th this link, you can see some examples uh, of how to use this kind of flow. Um, yeah, so this is the update for now. Uh, in the future, you know, we'll still keep working on supporting uh, more and more test benches. We'll look, take a look at UVM 2020, um, and obviously UVM adjacent verification features. As as I said, it's uh, those are really the bigger challenge than UVM 2020 itself because it's like, um, you know, it, the uh, various UVM test benches out there use really lots of different features for System Verilog. As you probably know, System Verilog has lots of features. Um, yeah, but we'll keep on uh, working on this and. Uh, I guess we'll get back to you. Thank you.
Thank you. with doing kind of timing accurate post synthesis? What's um, the plans and what's the roadmap looking like there? Do you mean using like uh, SDF? SDF, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, I don't think we should, apply, we should plan to support every, every version of SP SDF ever, <laughs> that sort of data. <laughs> SDF is a bit problematic and exactly. that's, uh, it would really destroy the performance in Verilator because you'd have to like be able to have a delay on every signal in theory, but um, yeah. You don't have to proceed on the less precise stuff. Uh, you don't? You need to know what the time gap was. Um, maybe. I haven't really, really thought about that. I we can talk uh, after if you have any idea how to do that. <laughs> Good topic for the coffee break. Um, with uh, uh, one of the com one of the challenges with constrained random verification is reproducibility. So when you fix your bug that your test bench found, you want it to generate the same constrained random the next time round, right? And so you have to seed your random generator, and you have to have the thing be robust to maybe slightly different scheduling because you know your design has changed. So uh, have have you guys tackled that problem? Yeah, actually, there is. Uh, I forgot to mention that, but we did some. Um, like Ver does have features for that where you set the random seed and, and we did uh, implement that to some extent. I'm not actually sure now if it's the full support, but there is some support for that at least. Yeah. What uh, <coughs> libraries exist in the open which use all of this constrained random UVM stimulus? Uh, what do you mean? What libraries? Yeah, like uh, are, are there any open source UVM sort of designs or you know libraries or whatever that oh. that make use of this yeah there's like risk 5 dv which is uh, this this kind of test suite for uh, risk 5 cores uh, and that uses uh, constraints i don't know if it uses uvm actually but it uses constrained randomization uh, i'm sure there are some other uh, test benches out there but uh, i can't can't tell you off the top of my head that's a good transition to the next talk. Thank you, Christoph, again.